Hello. For this video, we will be talking about uh, the inventory model where we will have stochastic demand, stochastic or probabilistic demand. And this model is uh, more popularly known as the newsboy model. Before we continue, let me, now, uh, let me explain first why is it called uh, the newsboy model. This is called the newsboy model because this is what uh, newspaper boy, newspaper boys uh, actually experience on a daily basis. What is the scenario here? Let's say you are a newspaper boy, and in this case, it's not the newspaper boy that actually delivers um, newspapers to your house every day. No, the the idea here is you are a newspaper boy where you you are going to purchase newspapers from the supplier so for example you're you're purchasing a uh, inquirer newspaper from the uh, from the from inquirer and you need to determine how many newspapers you will be ordering from inquirer because in this case demand is probabilistic you don't exactly know how many uh, newspapers you will be able to sell, okay? There is one big assumption that we have to take into consideration when dealing with the newspaper boy, and that this model assumes a fixed time period, okay? Uh, it, it really depends on the problem, the fixed time period. For the newspaper boy, the fixed time period here is one day. Why? Because uh, the, the, the assumption of the, the fixed time period is that once the period is done, your inventory is in a way technically useless already. Okay? Obviously, after today, any newspaper that uh, is left with the newspaper boy, it will be useless because no one will buy day-old newspaper. Okay? In the same manner, this model can also be applied to bakers. Why? Because the, the fixed time period for bakers is also one day. Because tomorrow, any baker will not, will not be able to sell their day-old uh, pandesal to, to, to customers anymore. And that is why a uh, French baker actually sells their, their products at 8.30 p.m. for a very big discount. I'm not sure if you, you know of this, but if you go to a French baker uh, store and you, you are there at 8.30, you will be able to buy their products no, at the end of the day at, I think, 30 or 40% discount. This is their way to make sure that all of their inventory will be uh, sold no, as much as possible because tomorrow no one will buy their day old bread. Now, the, the, the biggest difference between this and all the other models that we have discussed is the fact that your demand is stochastic. Okay? What do we mean by a stochastic demand? In this case, your demand is a random variable with uh, a probability distribution if the random variable, if the demand is discrete, or it can also be a probability density function if your uh, demand, the random variable demand is continuous. No? Generically, this demand, this prob this PDF, the probability distribution or density function, is uh, noted as your P of D. Okay? Just to give you an example, uh, your demand can be normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 5. No? So in this case, your demand is normally distributed. And in this case, demand is assumed to be uh, continuous. Or... Your D follows the following PDF, no? wherein your demand ranges from 0 to 5 with the following probability. Now, in, uh, in this case, we will be uh, using two parameters. Technically, these two parameters are essentially the, essentially the same as H and P, 
how we used H and P in the previous models. But for, for this model, what I'd like to do is I'd like to rename them into C sub O and C sub U. What is C sub O? C sub O is the cost of, that's why it, the subscript is O, the cost of oversupply. Meaning this is the cost because uh, because you ordered a lot. No? Uh, you, you have oversupply of whatever your, your inventory is. On the other hand, C sub U is the cost of undersupply. Okay? And uh, uh, cost of undersupply is the cost because you ordered just a few. Essentially, your C sub O is your holding cost in a way. Okay? And your C sub U is your shortage cost. Once we have our, uh, our parameters, our C sub O and C sub U, what we need to do right now is we need to formulate our total cost function. And because demand is a uh, random variable, meaning it's probabilistic, therefore, it is but natural that your total cost function is an expected value. And what is your total cost function equal to? In words, in words, your total cost function is equal to the expected cost of oversupply plus the expected cost of undersupply. Okay? And what is the cost of oversupply? The cost of oversupply per unit is C sub O. But you multiply C sub O to the amount of uh, excess inventory that you will have. And in this case, how much excess inventory will you have? You will have Q minus D excess inventory. Why? Because the assumption here is that D ranges from 0 to Q. And therefore, the amount you ordered minus the demand where demand is from 0 to Q, okay, so Q minus D is how much excess you have, okay? And in this case, because you are getting the expected cost, no, you are multiplying the excess with its probability, with its corresponding probability, and eventually multiplying it with C sub O. On the other hand, in order to get the expected cost of undersupply, of course, you multiply, uh, you have your C, C sub U. And what you need now is not the excess inventory, but how much shortage you have. And how much shortage you have? Your shortage is equal to your demand, where your demand is from Q plus 1 to infinity. So D minus the amount you ordered. In this case, D minus Q is positive because D is greater than Q. No? As you can see, D is from Q plus 1 to infinity. Okay? And again, because this is the expected cost, you need to multiply by its corresponding probability. By the way, I think it is but obvious that this total cost is the total cost assuming discrete. Okay, uh, this assumes that your demand, uh, demand random variable is discrete. What do we mean by that? That uh, we mean this, this part, no? Wherein your demand is listable, countable, no? Unlike, unlike the demand here where your demand is continuous, okay? Now, how do we get the optimal order quantity? Q star. So remember this total cost function, now this function is in terms of your variable Q because you're determining how many you will be ordering. Huh? In order to understand and uh, eventually get how, uh, our Q star, our optimal order quantity, the first thing we need to do is to understand how total cost, how the total cost function behave. Okay? First, 
try to imagine you are ordering a lot. So if you are ordering a lot, or in this case, Q is high, then if you look at these two total, uh, these two cost components, no? if you're ordering very high, then CO, this part, your cost of oversupply will be very high. However, your cost of undersupply will be very low. Why? Because if you're ordering a lot, then the tendency or the likelihood, likelihood that you will be left with excess inventory is very high. And therefore, this part of the cost com uh, total cost will be high. Consequently, again, because you're ordering a lot, then uh, it is less likely that you will be uh, you will have undersupply. And therefore, this part of the cost function will be low. Conversely, if you are uh, if you order just a few, or in this case Q is low, then the opposite will happen. We can expect the cost of oversupply to be low or going down, and the expected cost of undersupply to be going up. So as you can see, if your Q is a uh, high, we have this. If your Q is low, we have this. So on two extreme ends, no, uh, the total cost is behaving uh, differently, or in, in this case, inversely. And therefore, this uh, tells us that we need to find a balance somewhere in between. And because we are finding this balance, then this tells us that if we were a if we are able to graph the total cost function, this total cost function, then the graph, well, in the first place, the graph will be composed of um, points. Why? Because the assumption here is that your uh, demand is discrete. No, so it's not a continuous function. So, for example, uh, for example. No? Instead of having a graph that looks like this, no? your graph will look like this. No? It will only exist at particular values of D. Or sorry, of Q. Okay? So now, because we need to find a balance somewhere in between. This suggests that the shape of the total cost function is parabolic. And what I have here in the next slide is a very quick example. No? So let's assume your demand can run from 1 to 15. And again, D is discrete. So what I have here are 15 different points no? No? from 0 to 16. And in this case, your uh, total costs are represented by these black uh, dots. No? And as you can see, roughly, roughly the graph follows a uh, parabola. Now, visually speaking, where is the minimum point? No? The minimum point can be found here, there. Okay, and in this case, how do we know this is the minimum point? Obviously, right now we are able to see the graph, and therefore we can actually find where is the lowest part of the graph. And the lowest part of the graph is here. However, in general, we know that this is the lowest point in the graph because, well, first, given that your graph follows a somewhat parabolic shape. And secondly, no, if you compare the total cost at this point and you compare it with the total cost at this point, no, so TC of 8 should be higher than TC of 7. Okay, Remember, this is at 7. No? The other condition why this is also the lowest point is this. No? The TC of 6, the point to the left of the minimum, is also higher than 
the, 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 the point where you found the minimum. To generalize, what we need to do is if we want to find Q star, okay, so again, what we're doing is uh, we have this total cost function and we need to look for the optimal order quantity given that your demand is unknown. No? Uh, it, it is stochastic. Okay? So in this case, in order to find Q star, we must find Q such that first, TC of Q is less than the total cost at Q plus 1 or the, the total cost to its right. Or if we simplify, if we move things around, no, in order to find Q star, the first condition is this. No? We subtract TCQ plus 1 with TCQ and we make sure it is positive. Okay? The second condition is that uh, your TCQ should also be less than TCQ minus 1 or in this case, uh, the total cost to its left. Okay, and again, moving things around, we have this condition. So first, let us look at this first condition, no? where we need to make sure that uh, we need to make sure that your total cost at Q plus 1 no? minus TC of Q is positive. Okay, so we have that here. Now, uh, this is our TCQ. And therefore, in order for us to get TC of Q plus 1, all we have to do is, uh, well, TC of Q plus 1, all we have to do is make sure that for every time we see a Q in this total cost function, we convert it or we make it into Q plus 1, okay? So the total cost at Q plus 1 is equal to C sub O times the summation of uh, from D equals 0. In this case, instead of Q, this becomes Q plus 1. Your Q here becomes Q plus 1, no? so minus D P D. And then we have the plus C sub U. And then for the summation, instead of saying D equals Q plus 1 to infinity, it becomes Q plus 1 plus 1, or in this case, Q plus 2. And then your quantity D minus Q becomes quantity D minus quantity Q plus 1. So we have this times PD. And given that we already have our TC of Q plus 1 and TC of Q, all we have to do now is to subtract the two and make sure that the difference of the two is positive. Because after we do this, we, we, we will have the first condition where we can find Q star. And for, for, uh, for this, no? in order for us to do this, we need to transfer to our whiteboard, okay? So again, we have uh, this equation, this condition, TC of Q plus 1 minus TC of Q should be greater than 0. We have our TC of Q plus 1. We have TC of Q. And we need to get the difference of these two, okay? Before getting the difference of the two, I will first manipulate TC of Q plus 1. How will I manipulate this? First, so I have C sub O, okay? In this case, the summation from D equals 0 to Q plus 1, what I will do is I will convert it into a summation from D equals 0 to Q, okay? Now, if you compare the two summations, what actually happened? No? From this summation, to this summation, what actually happened? What happened is we removed one, one component of the summation no? uh, between the two. And what component is that? It is the component where 
we get this term, no, q plus 1 minus d, pd, at d equals q plus 1. No? Uh, maybe just to explain, if you have the summation from, let's say, x equals 1 to 5, okay, and uh, you convert this into the summation from x equals 1 to 4 of something, of course, no? What you need to do is for the 2 to be equal, okay, you need to add, okay, let me separate. You need to add this summation with this thing, whatever the term is, at x equals 5. Because if you have the summation term from x equals 1 to 4, and then you're adding the term at x equals 5, then this exactly is the summation from x equals 1 to 5. So we are doing the same thing here. No? From here, what we're doing is we are splitting the summation into two. It's the summation from 0 to q plus the, this term at, at uh, demand equals q plus 1. Okay? Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at the term and substitute d equals q plus 1. Looking at this term, if your d is at q plus 1, so q plus 1 minus quantity q plus 1, that actually becomes 0. So technically speaking, these two are already equivalent because... Uh, the, the second part, no, when you broke this summation into two, the second part is actually zero. Okay, and therefore these two are the same. In the same manner, in the same manner, so I have my CU here, summation of uh well summation of this, no, so D minus Q minus one P D. Okay, however. What I will be doing here is from d equals q plus 1 to infinity. And what is the difference here? The difference here is that this summation is bigger no, in terms of coverage. Why? Because, uh, again, as an example, no, this is an x equals, let's say, 4 to, 4 to infinity, and you are comparing it with... Um, x equals 5 to infinity, okay? So your x equals 5 to infinity is this. This is your, this is your q plus 2. And your q plus 1 is this, okay? And therefore, for the 2 to be equal, so you have your term. For the 2 to be equal, because this uh, this is from 5 to infinity and you converted it now to 4 to infinity, then you need to subtract this, no? Subtract. Okay? You need to subtract this summation with whatever this term is. So whatever the term is at x equals 4. Because you are removing the term at x equals 4 so that the summation now becomes x equals 5. So in the same manner, in the same manner, for these two to be equal, okay, for these two to be equal, you need to subtract this term at d equals q plus 1. And if you look at this, at d equals q plus 1, this again becomes 0. So te again, technically speaking, these two are the same. Okay? And finally, just to, just to fix this uh, total cost at q plus 1, no? just to fix, this is equal to c sub o summation of d equals 0 to infinity. In this case, I will uh, separate the plus 1 times pd. So what I will leave here is q minus d pd. Okay? And then I will, I will distribute c sub o. So plus c sub o times the summation of 
1 times PD. So that's just PD. And this is from D equals 0 to Q. Okay? And then I will do the same here no? uh, for C sub U. For C sub U, we have the summation from D equals Q plus 1 to infinity of D minus Q PD. And then I will subtract. Why subtract? Because you have your negative 1 here. No? So I will bring out the negative. So minus C sub U summation from D equals Q plus 1 to infinity of uh, 1 times PD. So that's P of D. Now, just to explain why I am doing this. Remember that our goal is to subtract the two. And if you look at TC of Q, we have this. No? If you have your TC of Q, uh, if you look at TC of Q plus 1, you have this. <clears throat> and in this case, given that you have uh, summation terms, no? you have uh, summation terms here, the only way you can subtract them is if they have the same indices. So um, looking at C sub O, your index here is from 0 to Q plus 1. However, your C sub O here is from D equals 0 to Q. That is why I converted this into this summation. It just so happens that uh, uh, we, uh, we just added 0 no? to, to, for, for the 2 to be equal. In the same way, the summation here for C sub U has an index Q plus 2 to infinity. However, here, your summation is from Q plus 1 to infinity. Again, it just so happens that, that in order for the 2 to be equal, we subtract, again, 0. And therefore, once we have this function, it is now, in quotation marks, subtractable to, to Tc of Q. And actually, let's, let's try to do that. No? So what is now Tc of Q plus 1 minus Tc of Q greater than 0? Okay, <clears throat> so Tc of Q plus 1 is this. And if we subtract this with this, what happens is this gets cancelled. This also gets cancelled. And therefore, what is left with us is a C sub O summation of P of D from D equals 0 to Q plus, ah, sorry, minus, no? Minus C sub U summation of uh, D equals Q plus 1 to infinity P of D. And we want to make sure that this is positive. Manipulating. We bring this down. We will not manipulate this part of the equation. In this case, if you look at this uh, summation, this is the summation of the probability uh, distribution function from d equals q plus 1 to infinity. No? But what do we know? No? So, but. We know that the summation from P of uh, of your probability distribution from D equals zero, so from the lower bound or from the lowest bound up to the highest uh, upper bound, no, is equal to one. Therefore, therefore the probab uh, the sum of the probability distribution from D equals Q plus one to infinity is actually equal to 1 minus the sum of P of D no, from D equals 0 to Q. Okay, so we input this here. So 1 minus summation of P of D from D equals 0 to Q. Okay, and then... And then we can rearrange and distribute C sub u. So what we will have is negative C sub u times 1 is negative C sub u 
I will uh, already transpose it to the right. No? So we will have something like this on the right. Negative C sub U times negative summation is a positive. So let me write that. So C sub O summation of D equals 0 to Q P D plus C sub U times, sorry, C sub U times the summation of D equals 0 to Q P D is greater than C sub U. And it's actually nice that the summation terms are the same, and therefore what we can do is we can factor it out. So we have C sub O plus C sub U, summation of PD from D equals 0 to Q greater than CU. And what we will be able to get here is this condition. The summation from D equals 0 to Q PD is greater than Cu over Cu plus Co. And this is our first condition. We have to make sure no, that after computing for this, no, we find Q such that if you get the sum of all the P of Ds from D equals 0 to Q, the sum is greater than this ratio. Okay? Now, what about the second condition? The second condition talks about Tc of Q minus 1 minus Tc of Q. And we need this to be greater than 0 as well. Okay? Now, uh, if you want to do this the long way, then you do th this part again, no? this part, okay? However, there is a short way of uh, doing this. And what is the short way? The first thing we need to do is to negate, no? negate uh, both sides. Multiply by negative one. Because we are multiplying by negative 1, then this becomes Tc of Q minus Tc of Q minus 1. The right-hand side will still be 0. But because we are multiplying by negative, uh, a negative number, then the sign should be opposite. Okay? So uh, this one, no, that is positive is also uh, is also the same as saying Tc of Q minus Tc of Q minus 1 is negative. And why do we want this? We want this because if you go back here, no, and we have this, diba? then technically this, this left-hand side, Tc of Q, minus Tc of Q minus 1 is actually this, let me insert one, is actually this, okay, where your Q plus 1 originally is now Q, and your Q now becomes Q minus 1. So what are we saying now? Every time you see a Q here, all you have to do is convert it to Q minus one, no? So, so, how will the function look like? So in this case, C sub O summation, no? So again, going back, this becomes the summation from P of, D, uh, summation of P of D from D equals zero to, in, in this case, instead of Q, it becomes Q minus one. So we have P of D, D equals 0 to Q minus 1. And then plus C sub U summation. Your Q plus 1 will actually become Q. So D equals Q to infinity of P of D. And in this case, instead of saying positive, we need it to be negative. 
Okay? So we have this condition. And doing the same, no? so C sub O, summation of D equals 0 to Q minus 1, PD, plus, in this case, C sub U is equal to, ah, sorry, this part of the summation is equal to 1 minus the summation of D equals 0 to Q minus 1, PD, and we want everything to be less than 0. Okay? Sorry, uh, this is a minus, and therefore this should have been a minus. To continue, uh, negative Cu times 1 transposed to the right is a Cu. And then we have this, no? We have this and we have this. Uh, let me do it the shortcut. Your summations are the same, and therefore we can factor that out. Uh, what is inside the parenthesis is your C sub O plus, no? because you have two negatives, plus C sub U times the summation from D equals 0 to Q minus 1 of P of D. And again, all you have to do is divide everything by uh, CO plus CU. Then we have this. And this is our second condition. And because we need the two conditions to be correct, to be able to find Q star, okay, to be able to find Q star, then we need to intersect the two conditions, okay? So what is the intersection of these two conditions? The intersection is this. So you have your Cu plus Cu plus Co, and it has to be between, well, between, Let's remove the equality. The summation of your P of D from D equals 0 to Q and the summation from D equals 0 to Q minus 1 of P of D. Okay? And this, guys, is our condition to be able to find Q star. So actually your Q here is your Q star. What does this uh, condition mean? It means that after computing for your CU over CU plus CO, remember CU and CO are constants. No? So this is a uh, constant. What you need to do is to get the cumulative probability distribution. Remember, these are cumulative probability distributions because you're getting the sum of your PD from zero to some, to some value. Okay? And when you look for the cumulative uh, probability distribution, you find the Q and the Q minus one such that the, the, the two cumulative probability distribution sandwiches the constant in between. 